Winning cures everything. Here are your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything, number 109. It is the Tuesday, August 8th edition of the show. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. On today's show, we are discussing Greg Schiano saying his Ohio State defensive line is better than even his former NFL D-lines. What is he talking about? Uh, we bring in Ryan Nanny from SB Nation, and every day should be Saturday, and the shutdown full cast. He's going to trash talk for a little bit. Then we bring in John Lacombe from the WestLotPirates.com. Join, he uh, joins the show to discuss some Big Ten football along with their article on the Hugh Freeze mess. And we close out with some talk about Christian Hackenberg getting kicked out of Jets practice, Jay Cutler being signed by the Dolphins, etc., etc. But before we do anything else, let's do the rundown so you guys can know how to contact us. Check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. You can give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. You can follow us on Twitter, at winningcures. You can follow myself, at GaryWCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini, C-H-R-I-S-B-G-I-A-N-N-I-N-I. You can email the show, winningcureseverything, at gmail.com. You can download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, all your favorite podcast apps. On iTunes, we are getting awfully close to our 25 five-star reviews thing that we talked about last week. Here's the deal. Give us a review. Give us five stars, put a sentence in there, make sure it pops up, um, and then from there, once we get 25 of them, we are donating $25 to St. Jude first, and then Laboner after that, et cetera. So every 25 that we hit, we are going to be donating, giving to charity here in Memphis. We are also on Local X, localxradio.com or the Local X app on your smartphone every Tuesday and Friday at 9 a.m. First off, Today's show is being brought to you by Kyle Seeger's Designs. If you need great, affordable web design for your company, business, or just personally, check out kyleseegers.com. He can handle all of your web development needs, including site building, maintenance, branding, and more. For more information, visit Kyle Seeger's Designs at kyleseegers.com. Now, Chris, I got to start out the podcast by giving a shout out to my buddy, Jay Billings, who owns Desired Comfort Specialist. My air conditioning, as you can attest, has been out for a week. Yes. It's not so bad because you let me borrow a window unit, which was perfect in my room. Man, I thought our our air conditioning unit had frozen up. And it, here's the deal. We had a friend that house sat for us last weekend, or I guess two weekends ago. And we got home, and the damn thermostat was on 60 degrees. Now, I've had this happen before in like old thermostats. This thing was 60 degrees. I was like, he froze it up. Absolutely froze it up. I didn't know what to look for when I looked at it. Even when I've had one in the past that was frozen, I still didn't see where they were talking about. Oh, yeah, you just got to look right here. I had no idea. I don't I don't study that stuff. But, it, look, Jay came out, knocked this thing out, 30 minutes. Cold air was blowing in no time. The, the whole house immediately felt better. It was great. So if you need anything done with your HVAC, give them a call, 901-605-7650. Or look them up on Facebook at Desired Comfort Specialist. Tell them Gary and Winning Cures Everything sent you. He's going to cut you a deal. So he is, uh, I'm telling you, he was awesome. Very, very awesome. <laughs> like this room automatically feels much better. Oh, it? no. I'm, I'm very glad he was here. We would have we'd have been figuring something else out. That's it. Yeah. La- big last boy, week, I can't handle no AC in the South oh, now. Last week was awful. Because, yep. uh, you know, we, we did the thing with Brando and whatnot. It had no AC up here. I know. Nothing. It was terrible. And let's You know, let's talk some football. Let's, let's move go. on. Greg Schiano says his defensive line at Ohio State this year is the most talented he has ever been around, and that includes the NFL. Now, here's the quote. He said, it is, and that's not a joke, he told the Big Ten Network. We had a great player in Tampa in Gerald McCoy. Tremendous player, but that was one guy. I go back to my days at Miami in 99 and 2000. This is clearly a better group than those guys, and that's saying something. Now, Shiano coached an undefeated Penn State team. He was the coordinator for the 2000 Miami squad that just met out on the uh, national championship game. It, that's some really, really high praise. And, like, including a Bucks defense that included McCoy and other guys like Michael Bennett, Adrian Claiborne, William Golston. Like, are you kidding me? No college league, no college team, no college players are as good as NFL players. Like, I don't understand he, why he coaches can't know figure this out. Because he's coached in both leagues. Yeah. He's just a fool. Like, this, and here's what I don't understand about it. 
it makes no sense to make a statement like that because it puts undue pressure on that that part of the team. How good do they have to be? How many quote unquote sacks, rushes, fumble returns, whatever? How many people have to get drafted? Yeah. How how good do they have to be this season for that to sound correct? Because it sounds to me it can only kind of be disproven. It can only Yeah. It can only look bad. There's there's no good. way that they can make it good enough to where somebody will say, Oh yeah, well that, that that's right. That been reminds me of that Bucks team. Yeah, that's better ridiculous. than them. Here's here's the lineup for D Lyman for Ohio State this year, just so that we got a, a name with everything. Taquan Lewis, Sam Hubbard, Jalen Holmes, Nick Bosa, Draymond Green, Tracy Sprinkle, Michael Hill, and five star true freshman Chase Young. Now Chase Young, he actually called out by name, saying he's gonna be awesome. This dude's a freshman, he hadn't even played yet. That's right. Like, give me a break. A lot of so, pressure, a lot of stress. I don't understand the comment. And here's the thing, they're probably gonna be really good. Yeah, I just don't. But they won't be good enough to live up to that expectation. The only it's impossible. I wonder is it is it kind of a ploy because they lost so much in the secondary, and so if they're bad, maybe we don't kill these guys so much. And you know, if they give up a bunch of points, they can say, "Oh, well, look how young we are," even though they're replacing all those secondary guys with more five stars. It's like, yeah, well, we gave them up because of passing, or we, you know, whatever. I, I don't, I don't. I just don't understand the logic. I think that coaches are really smart, and I think there is something behind everything that's ever said. Yeah. I, I feel like they're all trying to play chess, and I don't understand this comment. I don't understand it either. Now, it didn't make my only sense. thought is is if he's wanting a head coaching job somewhere else and the defense looks really good, but for some reason Ohio State underperformed, they can say, oh, well, Shiano was doing his job. But I, yeah. think, I think his resume is good enough to where he should get a head coaching gig anywhere he wants – if you wanted it to begin with, well, maybe not anywhere, but I mean, yeah, I get. Oh, I don't know. I, oh, I disagree with that. I think any school in the country that jobs opened up, I think he's just as good as the guy that's in the job right now. I really don't know why he hasn't gotten another job. I don't like. Even, why is he a DL coach or D line coach? I don't. I don't know. But there's there's not a sing, we we've had this conversation off air. We've had a little on air. There's not a single SEC coach right now, other than Nick Saban, that you can say definitively is probably a better coach than him. I think I agree with that. There's not one. I think I agree with that. All right, now before we get to Ryan Nanny, we got to bring him in here in just a minute. While you and I were recording an incredible show with Tim Brando and Chris Felica last week, the rest of the world was apparently watching the NFL preseason <laughs> Hall of Fame game between the Cowboys and the Cardinals. Now, and you and I went and turned this on like right after we got done. Have you seen the ratings on this thing? Pretty big number. There were 7.8 million people watching. That is more than every single NBA playoff game other than the championship series. Does that blow your mind a little bit? No, our country loves football. Like, I don't think that we will ever be done with football because of the amount of people that want to watch it. People talk about football, you know, has to figure something out eventually. You know, all the head injuries and stuff like that, people are going to turn away from it. The game has to evolve. I, I don't know that that's right. Because while some of the head injury stuff scares me and some of the dirty business that makes football what it is kind of makes me sad and I wish I could not like it, I don't know. We still how, watch. I don't know how ugly it would have to get for me to stop watching it. I agree. Like, I know. I'm, I'm very informed on how the sausage is made and I'm going to eat the hell out of the sausage. <laughs> like, it really doesn't matter. Like, it, it do, I'm not getting turned away at all. That's I'm I'm with you 100%. All right, let's uh let's jump on in. We're going to bring in Ryan Nanny from SB Nation and everydayshouldbesaturday.com. This is going to be good. Next up on Winning Cures Everything on Local X. This is Gary Seegers from Winning Cures Everything and I know you're looking for new gear for college football season. If that's the case, check out the new online store at winningcureseverything.com. We've got new WCE shirts in all sizes with all your favorite SEC colors. Just click on the store tab at winningcureseverything.com. All right, we'd like to welcome in the co-host for the Shutdown Fullcast, a writer at SB Nation and Every Day Should Be Saturday, and one of the funniest college football writers on the internet. You can follow him on Twitter, at Celebrity Hot Tub. He is Ryan Nanny. Ryan, welcome to Winning Cures Everything. Thanks for jumping in with us. Thank you guys for having me. All right, Ryan, we want to get into some, some dive deep, serious questions, okay? Your, your Twitter handle. Yeah, the, deep, yeah, the, the deep analytics. Yeah, I know. Like, 
every depth chart down to the Absolutely. fourth quarterback. I am just the perfect guy for this. Okay, <laughs> that's that's what I need. That's exa- I'm going to need you to tune into that. Your Twitter handle Great. is Celebrity Hot Tub at Celebrity Hot Tub. How much do you actually love celebrities and hot tubs? Um, celebrities, I guess I feel feel okay about. You know, they they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and tolerance <laughs> levels. Being on Twitter certainly makes celebrities less interesting for whatever reason. Hot tubs, I have a pretty sketchy record with. Um, I recorded a podcast uh, with the Solid Verbal guys a few years ago before yep. the yep. Florida State Auburn National Championship game. We stayed in. We did it from a uh, jacuzzi, and we stayed in for four hours or so. And I was basically God. dehydrated and throwing up for the whole next day. Yeah, Good. that's Lord. probably against uh, doctor's orders. I would think so. Yeah, I would it, think so. It, it was. It was not the smartest medical decision I've ever made. <laughs> All right, now for first timers to the show, we like to get an idea of their backstory and whatnot. You started out as an attorney, if I'm not mistaken. Now, that is ha- correct. Yeah. How did you end up writing for EDSBS and SB Nation, and you know, doing all the videos and podcast content? Um, so, like every attorney, you know, my main goal was to figure out how to bullshit my way through the day and waste time. And what better way to do that than on a college football internet uh, website comment section? There you so go. I sort of was just lurking around there being a moron. And <laughs> at some point, uh, Spencer Hall reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to, to just sort of contribute on an occasional basis. And that sort of grew into writing a little more, and that sort of grew into a part-time job and then a full-time job and now I have continued to uh, maintain employment at SB Nation for reasons that probably they and I do not fully understand. All right, now what what exactly is your title as of right now? Like I, I know that stuff changes all the time. So what right. what do they have you doing like right this second? Technically my title is um, I'm the executive producer for video for SB Nation. In practice what I do is about damn near everything. We have the shutdown forecast, which I have the miserable job of uh, being the audio engineer in addition to a co-host, which <laughs> is not great when you have at least one co-host who is uh, recording from outside in his backyard while his neighbors fight and run a weed whacker, usually. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and I write a little, and I there was a spell where I had to order all the snacks for the office. I basically do whatever needs to get done and they haven't figured out that I am not qualified to do yet. That's awesome. All right, so uh good gracious. That's it sounds like the perfect job, really. It's, <laughs> it's an interesting one. I will, I'll say that much. All right, let's let's jump into a little current news. The news popped up uh, recently. Uh Sanford Stadium, Georgia's home stadium, will be serving Dreamland barbecue. Now, is it possible that Georgia is tone deaf, or did Alabama just pull off one of the all-time best troll jobs ever by having a Tuscaloosa-based rib joint as a caterer at Georgia games? I mean, you know, I think the real concern here is what's happening to all the Georgia barbecue, because we already know Georgia's got a problem keeping talent in state, and we thought that that was just a football thing. But now, you know, is Fox Brothers going to turn up at a Clemson game? Or is heirloom going to end up, you know, going to Memphis or something like that? And, and oh, Memphis it, won't let him in. <laughs> well, no, Memphis, Memphis absolutely won't let him in. But I don't know, UCF? Maybe oh, you're damn right about UCF. Get absolutely. A little, get a little barbecue down there. So so that's what really concerns me. It's, it's one thing to bring in talent from another state, but what happened to putting up a fence around your football and barbecue powerhouses? What happened to that? <laughs> And now they're bringing in guys from Alabama, which is just all-time troll job of, of just a reminder of exactly how little their team has actually accomplished. I love this. Well, I mean, it, it, at least they're starting to learn it themselves. Now, you're a Florida fan. Well, Florida grad. Is that right? Um, I would say I am a Florida uh, – it's sort of – I was telling somebody the other day, it's sort of like how you can uh, – get diabetes as a child or as an adult i so i have like type one florida fan i was born with it and i sort of have to live with it and manage it and there are good days and bad days and hopefully i'll just make it to next season i can understand well, it could be a lot worse that's true, it that's true. yeah oh it could and and you know losing what? to that's alabama in the nc championship game is not the worst thing in the world 
<laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not definitely fun. not. And Florida fans are probably the worst kind of entitled. Expect way too much. Demand like not just to win, but to win in a certain way. So I will fully admit that we are um, not across the board, but most of us are pretty unpleasant for no good reason. Especially when you know there are programs. You look at somebody like Virginia Tech, and they're like, "Are you kidding me? You guys have won <laughs> three national championships." since most of you have been alive and we haven't won one and you have the audacity to whine and moan. So yeah, we're terrible. Yeah, I can understand that. Well, we've, now we've heard from, from people who are actual celebrities on social media that Florida is without question the worst. That's a funny man. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, he's like the Alabama. He did the, what is it? The How Alabama, Alabama fans, fans watch football. So yeah, he's he did videos. it, and Chris Felica told us that Florida fans are the worst to him. Like if you if yeah. you pick against them or anything like that, just that they're awful. Yeah, I I wish I had like some strong defense here, but I don't. But you got I mean, nothing. I will are, say Miami Miami fans are pretty bad, but they exist in so much smaller numbers. That so so true, so true. All right, now our side has been on top of the uh, the Ole Miss NCAA stuff. We're based in Memphis, so we're about an hour outside of Oxford. And we are bombarded with it all the time. I know you and the full cast guys tend to jump all over situations that can be turned into jokes easily. When all of the stuff about Freeze broke, you did an emergency podcast. But what kind of went through your mind the night that Freeze resigned from Ole Miss? What What were you thinking when that actually happened? I mean, it's almost too perfect because all of the focus on Ole Miss was really about just straight NCAA violations, recruits getting money, recruits families, that kind of, like, it was so down the middle. And then just to have this massive left turn for something that has nothing to do with any of it, that is in no way related, you add the Houston nut cherry on top of it, and it's really a good, <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's like the perfect encapsulation of what makes college football so fun and so ridiculous because if this you know if it's the nfl it's just like well you know we're committed to blah 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 but college always has to say oh you think you know what's going on nope here's a curveball <laughs> here's two freeze finding escorts on uh using a phone using a, a a university phone to contact escorts it's just it's just perfect it just if, if you had somebody who never watched college football say why do you care about this thing in the off season, just tell them this story and they'll get it. Exactly. It's uh, the fact that it was Houston Nut that was pulling phone records when anybody around here remembers ten years ago when he got busted for phone records for an affair with a reporter. <laughs> like it's just right. it's so and, perfect. And, and it's like I don't even know how this will benefit Houston Nut. I don't see how this gets him anything that he wants or helps his lawsuit. It's just it's got like this extra layer of just spite. And if you can't appreciate that, what are you even doing watching this game? Oh, it's so good. All right, like like we were just talking about, you keep the entertainment aspect of college football in focus for us. And some people treat the game kind of like life and death. You make it enjoyable. That's exactly what we want out of it. Now, with that said, we're going to do a little rapid fire right now. I want you to tell me the first thought that pops in your head whenever we read these off. Funny, not funny. Oh, we don't give a I'm shit. Like, it doesn't matter. So. Yeah, I'm going to get fired. But that's okay. I'm ready for it. No, no, nobody really listens to this. So. <laughs> no, no Good, thank God. Yeah, so SEC West. Um, boring. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> until 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 proven otherwise. It's it's this is the time of year where everybody's just like, oh, who's going to beat Bama? And then you look around, and you're like, I don't know. Maybe if Jared Stidham's bones all stay together, uh, it'll be interesting. But yeah, uh, until somebody else can win the damn division, the SEC West is is an interesting route to a very familiar ending. All right. Dabo. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I will say excitable. And and what I like about Dabo is that he already had this sort of quality of he would say whatever he wanted. Oh, um, yeah. More, and that was, that was before he won a national championship. So that oh, yeah. Was, I mean, the, when he, bring your own guts and whatnot. Yeah. yeah, and some part of his brain had to be thinking like, well, you know, keep everything, keep stay within a certain lane here, don't go overboard. But now he's got that ring, so I can only imagine what Dabo is going to say all season long. It's going to be great. 
uh, the craziest shit is I'm sure yet to come from him. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Right. And 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 you you know what we didn't get to see a lot last season was the halftime or first game interview with Rattle Gabba. And if you haven't seen that, like that's what the, the really good stuff is where his brain is just like Oh man, we're low on oxygen. Don't say anything, and he just starts speaking in tongues. It's wonderful. <laughs> All right, Uncle Vern. Um, classic. I, I there are people out there who dislike Vern Lundquist, and for reasons that I really don't understand. But he's just sort of like he's just sort of like college football Santa Claus at this point. Yeah, he doesn't always bring you what you want, but why would you not want him? around why would you not appreciate what he does and jolliness that he brings to the thing he's wonderful i think a lot of people are going to miss him this year it, oh, he became the yeah. butt of the I joke mean, for a while but it without him yeah. there it's kind of kind of one of those things where you don't know what you got till it's gone 100 percent. yep arkansas arkansas <laughs> uh, i will say mysterious um because i do think that I, I think it's very funny that Bobby Petrino got fired and Arkansas, Jeff Long said, you know what, I'm going to hire this uh, personality-filled coach from the Midwest because he wrote me a nice letter. And there's a part of me, and this is I'm going to say that all of this is supposition and, and you cannot sue me because I don't have any money anyway, Arkansas. <laughs> part of me is kind of like, man... I feel like Brett Bielema, any day now, would just be careening towards his own Petrino and freezing, whatever it is. But, on the other hand, now he's a new father, and I am very excited to see (laughs) bleary-eyed, got two hours of sleep because the baby's going through a sleep regression. Oh, yes. Brett Bielema, try to explain why Arkansas just lost by 30 to Mississippi State. (laughs) (laughs) This is your your thing. So... Be nice here. Jim Harbaugh. This is my boy. <laughs> um, I'm going to preface it by saying it's my boy. So, uh, so Jim, all right, I'll say this. Jim Harbaugh is a genius in that. We, so I love Dabo because Dabo just will sort of say whatever. And Jim Harbaugh has that feeling of, like, boy, he says some crazy things and does some weird stunts and, like, will go after people in weird ways on Twitter. But it's all, there's always this hint of, like, he at least thinks there's a purpose for it. There is always some sort of plan behind everything he does. That, like, I assume you all have heard the stories about how when he was younger, he was out, I think he was out uh, maybe on a double date, maybe just on a regular date, and he had the girl that he was out with run routes, and he, like, yep. fired in bo- He was, like, throwing, you know, bullets on a slant <laughs> pattern to the woman that he... And so he's just this kind of maniacal person to whom I think everything has a football purpose, even if it shouldn't. Like, I wouldn't even want to go grocery shopping with Jim Harbaugh because oh, no. he would somehow oh, no. make it about my failings as an athlete. <laughs> yeah. if you're walking you're walking down an aisle with a cantaloupe. He's just going to knock it out of your hands, tell you you should protect the ball that's at right. all times. That's right. That's bad. That's bad melon control. That's right. What are you going to do? Right. You're letting down your family. Yeah. He, you're letting down your he is, family. He is the ultimate football man. He's the ultimate football man. He is. He is. He is. He is just bleeding football from every orifice. Yeah. Yes. I don't know how his family puts up with him, but all right. <laughs> I don't know that they do. I think they lock him in the garage like a. I think they lock him in the shed like a werewolf, and they're just like, "We'll come get you." He lives in the guest house. Here. Yeah. Yes. All right. Wake Forest. Um. God. <laughs> Lo- lovable but unimportant. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's just, a good one. That's yeah. It's just it's hard to just have any real strong feelings about way. I, I'm glad that they seem to be doing better than they were, but like, I'm most, curious to see most, like what they're going to be like this year when their game plans are not being sold to other teams. <laughs> well, well, and I mean. I still think that people were just buying those just as a joke, just to be like, okay, sure, I'll buy the Wake Forest game plan. What's in it? Does it have like cheat codes? It's like, no? nope. It's got um, nothing that we haven't seen before or that we give a shit about. Yeah, I mean, here's who's the most accomplished Wake Forest football player you can think of. 
Oh, oh. I, I was going to – I didn't know you were going to say football. I was going to say Chris Paul. But <laughs> right, then, right. But, but, and, then you, and, but then you prefaced every, it. Every other, every other program is sort of like – they in that category where you're just like, oh, they can't really get it together. You know, whether it's Indiana, you can say, you know what? They had Antoine Randall Big foot, like really fun football player, did a little bit of something in the league. Um, Cal, Cal has had a down a down few years, but you can name tons of talented Cal. Like, Wake Forest, it's just like, I don't know. I hope Riley Sim is doing well. He's probably co-managing a dealership, but good for him, wherever he is. <laughs> That's it, awesome. See, I'm even trying to Google, and there isn't a thing on here about any of them. There's right. nothing. It, it's it's like I think Wake Forest football is a good place to go if you really just want to get an education and keep your head down. Right. I that, can see that. That makes perfect. We got sense. we got three more, so we're coming close. BCS. Okay. Um, I don't miss it at all. I really don't. I mean, I know that there are. We're still sort of hemming and hawing about if the playoff makes any sense and if it's, you know, too small or if it's a waste of time with certain teams. But, like, it's just more interesting. It's way more interesting to get to, you know, even even uh, conference championship games and sort of know that, okay, you only need one weird thing to happen. Before it was like, yeah, you needed this team to beat that team and two other teams to lose and this team to tie. And, and the BCS was a um, a reasonable fix for the time, but I don't miss it at all. You know, I've actually got a uh, an article up on our website that is discussing the the nineteen ninety seven season, and i I didn't think that I liked the BCS until I figured out where it came from. Because in ninety seven, you know, we had Michigan and uh, Nebraska that both won a national championship, right? Yeah, and there was no way for them to play. Like, right. it was just ridiculous. Like, what in the hell were we even thinking back then? Yeah, I mean, it's it's even better when you go further back and you're like, wait, we gave out the national title before bowl games were played? <laughs> like, for, for everything that we think was dumb and broken about the BCS, you do not have to go that far back. Yeah. To oh, yeah. It, it came from a dark so place. So much dumber. So much dumber. Yeah, it definitely came from a, a, a dark place. All right, last two. Spencer Hall. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> timing challenged. Spencer <laughs> Spencer is the kind of person who like you can tell him be here at nine o'clock and like it's just a coin flip. He has missed more flights than anybody I know. He has also talked his way on to more flights that he should have been barred from because he was at the gate too late. He exists in his. It basically, he exists in his own space-time continuum, and sometimes that aligns with yours, and sometimes it doesn't. And it's not malicious. It's just sort of like an alien who doesn't breathe our atmosphere. Like I don't, just, I don't understand how oxygen works. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know how a clock works. Like I don't no, understand yeah, this timing yeah, mechanism. I mean, it's why I think he really likes Les Miles so much, and he does. And I think that's because he sees a kinship where Les Miles would say, what is a minute and 42 seconds? And Spencer would say, yes, exactly. Time is meaningless. <laughs> All right, last one, Florida. Uh, can, I, can I ask a clarifying question? Do you mean the state or the university? Whichever you'd like. Probably, we're gonna, I would rather it be about the university, but if you want to talk about all the New Yorkers that moved down there to retire, that's fine too. Oh, boy. All right, we'll do the university because God knows I bash the state of my birth way too much. Um, you know, Florida might – Florida just needs to chill is what it is. Florida is – Florida. It, it, I was saying the other day about how Florida paid – a lot of money to buy Jim McElwain's contract out from Colorado State. Money that basically Colorado State turned around and said, okay, well, we'll just, you're, you're paying for Mike Bobo. You're paying for our next coach. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And, like, I am a little worried that Florida, if, if things don't take a pretty significant jump forward with Jim McElwain in the next, let's say, two years, they're going to start doing the thing Notre Dame did where it's like they're paying how many coaches at once and none of them coach. Oh, 
Well, that's <laughs> terrible. And I just, I just want them to chill a little bit. I just want them to calm down, recognize that it's a tough environment right now because they play in a very uninspiring division. Winning it means nothing, except that you get to get your head caved in by Alabama. They have at least one in-state rival who is kind of ahead of them in all the ways that matter. And I just need Florida fans to say, you know what? We all got to see some national championships and some great players and a Heisman winner, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's just agree to be calm for the next few years. Maybe it's going to go great. Maybe it's going to go poorly. But let's all just, you know, focus on the baseball team or swimming and diving. And let's still go to football games, but let's just try to dial down our our (laughs) wrath if possible. Because it's expensive wrath, and I don't want that. That that was a really educated answer. Like, I I love that answer. And and it was reasonable. I grapple a lot with Florida football and what it should and should not mean to me. And that's the, like, I'm just trying to find my zen. I'm there just you trying so hard to find some <laughs> middle ground. So I'm an, I'm, an, I'm an LSU fan, and I had to go through that the last couple of years, is what is reasonable for LSU? Like, right, what, right. Why, why, why is it our God-given birthright to win 10 games every year? And if we don't, why should we blow the whole thing up? Yeah. And hire Ed Orgeron. Come on. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, you know what? It's going to be interesting, at least. Oh, you yeah, got that right. Kind of a boring option they it, chose. Well, Les was never boring. Now, the offense was boring, but Les was never right. boring. That's All right, look, I, we've got a couple more, and I, I have kept you for too long, but I ran across a post online. I was doing some research on you to figure out, you know, what what the hell should we ask, you know? And the post said, Ryan Nanny hates Texas A&M. Now, I listened to the podcast. It, it was the Never Been Click Texas A&M podcast. It, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Now, how much do you hate A&M this year? And how many games will it take before someone is fired? Like, is it possible Chip Kelly could be coaching this team by November? Um, <laughs> God. So, so how much do I hate? I, I think I don't hate Texas A&M. I'm just like, it feels like somebody who keeps watching Old Yeller and is like, but this time, the dog will be okay. And I just want to <laughs> say, guys, the movie, it's always the same. It really doesn't. There's not that much variety to it. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, it's tough because I think they are squarely in this weird place where Kevin Sumlin is not so clearly bad that they need to get rid of him, but he's also not so clearly good that he justifies the contract he's received. I mean... Johnny Manziel got that, him paid. You, like Johnny Manziel, Johnny Manziel got a lot of people paid. Oh yeah. Somehow, but I mean, do you see? I, I have already said that the UCLA game is the most interesting non-conference game that probably won't have college football playoff implications. Um, just because those are the two fan bases with, I think, coaches that have shown flashes and have shown that they can take the team to heights that they hadn't been in the recent past, but are also ready to bail, are just ready for the first sign of weakness, just be like, nope, jugular time, quick. <laughs> and and I do not want to be a member of the coaching staff that loses the a and game. Oh, you it's got just, that right. It just blows the water immediately. Yeah, it's, it's loser leaves town week one. That's yeah, awful. It's, which is great. We, we should have, honestly, I <laughs> every, think, I think the NCAA should schedule like five of those games every year. They should say, your week one opponent is somebody else who's on the hot seat. You don't like it too bad. Yeah. You should have played better last year. It was Auburn LSU last year. It was Auburn LSU last year. Yeah, it, Auburn, liter- yeah, it was Auburn. literally loser leaves town. Les was fired yeah. like hours after the game. <laughs> Right, and we didn't. And for a while, we didn't even know who the loser was. which is the best part. They, oh yeah, no, it's the only time where he won the game and then he didn't win the game and then he lost his job. Yeah, he, he, it's the most Les Miles way to end his career. Oh, absolutely. So, okay. On that note, if Les Miles is hired by uh, somebody else by the next off season, will that immediately become your favorite team? Oh gosh! All right, so I have to count this with. If it's Notre Dame, no. Like, I have limits. <laughs> less, less, isn't, less isn't going I, Notre Dame. I, I, 
I appreciate less miles, but like there are some teams that I'm just not going to. Um, will it become my favorite team? It would be the one that I pay the most attention to. That's that's absolutely for sure because we know what Les was able to do in like a pretty stable environment. LSU was in a good position to recruit. They had good funds. He was relatively, you know, even through some of the other down years, um, he never his seat never got really hot. I I want to see what happens when Les Miles is back into a corner from like week one, where the expectations are like, all right. Let's see what you got. I really am excited to see what fireworks he can pull out of who knows where. That's phenomenal. All right, let's uh, let's close this out. Let's do a little predicting. All right, you have right. had a run of predicting divisions on the uh, on the full cast. Your style of predicting games is honestly probably more accurate than the so-called experts. Who have you got in the college football playoff this year, and why? Oh my god! Um, all right, I'm going to preface this with that one of these teams is going to be hellaciously wrong like I'm the kind of person who picks Georgia Tech and then they go three and nine or Michigan or whoever so so one of these just think I'm being categorically wrong well, look, uh, Chris, Chris has got completely you're like, in good company here. yeah okay. he, he's got Louisville Michigan uh who the hell else do you have Louisville Michigan LSU and uh god what was the third team the fourth team oh USC USC I went okay. chalk on I went chalk on one <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, so that's what you're working against. So my rankings for the that, top 25 that, was like 12, I, I, I 18, go, and 19. I would go with Ohio State just because I okay. won't argue that the recruiting results. They get Oklahoma, that that's a home game this year. And just, you know, even battered in their years, they're like, that was a really damn good year. I don't know what any of you are upset about. Um, but I was simultaneously. <laughs> take Oklahoma because I do think that's going to be the game that somebody loses and we're all like oh they're out they can't do it they're done just put put them in a put them in a shallow grave and the rest of the Big 12 is getting back to uh, competitive status the really interesting thing for me is going to be the Big 12 championship game because the conference decided it was this important thing that they had been shut out of the playoffs because of it and, like, did they even look at what the Big 12 championship game used to be? It was a place where, more often than not, that's where a championship participant, national championship participant, went to have their hopes dashed. Exactly. Like Kansas State or Missouri or whoever. So they're going to be my two, so, even though I've just talked myself out of them. Good job, <laughs> me. Um, okay, I'm going to say Georgia because I just said that there's one team that, you know, is hellaciously wrong and in my heart which is black and evil I want that to be Georgia so hey Georgia I just said you're going to the college football playoff and I mean it with every fiber of my being um, and then I guess I would go uh, USC is an interesting pick I'm not sure that I totally believe in them at this point even though the Rose Bowl is great and um, I'll go Florida State it's not as interesting of a pick, but they have some really excellent defensive pieces. The Alabama game um, will be a good test for them, but Alabama's got its own share. I mean, both those teams have their issue with like weird criminal disarray right now. But um, I think Jimbo Fisher is too good of a coach and a recruiter to be out of the playoffs this long. I think he gets them back. Nicely done. I like it. All right, we're going to close that out. He is Ryan Nanny from the SB Nation and the Shutdown Full Cast. You can follow him on Twitter at Celebrity Hot Tub. Ryan, it's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. we got to get you back on the show again sometime this season. All right, thanks a lot, fellas. All right, appreciate it, buddy. All right, see ya. This is Gary Seegers, your co-host and owner of Winning Cures Everything, the best sports blog and podcast in the South. There are a ton of ways that you can connect with us. First, check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. Second, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. Third, follow us on Twitter, at winningcures, or myself, at ProSevereGary, or at Chris B. Giannini. Four, email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. Fifth, download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, 
Tune in, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all of your favorite podcast apps. We'll have new shows up every Tuesday and Friday morning along with different articles throughout the week. Remember, winningcureseverything.com. We're getting closer to football season, but man, it is still hot outside. And there's nothing worse than not knowing who to call if your air conditioning goes out. If you're in Memphis, we've got you hooked up. Jay Billings with Desired Comfort Specialists is quick, dependable, and he's available day or night for all your HVAC service, repairs, and installations. All you have to do is give him a call, 901-605-7650. So when your AC goes out, you know who to call to get it taken care of. Look him up on Facebook at Desired Comfort Specialist or call Jay Billings at 901-605-7650. Welcome back to Winning Cures Everything with Gary and Chris on Local X. Right now, we want to bring in a writer and podcaster for Northwestern football website, westlotpirates.com. You can follow them on Twitter, at Westlot Pirates. He is John Lacombe. Welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I now, appreciate did I, it. Did I say that name right? You did. You did. I get it. I, I've gotten all different kinds. Lacombe <laughs> is the way that it's pronounced. But uh, if, you've, if you've been around... Uh, particularly woman, you get Lancome more times than you'd care to admit. But, uh, yeah, no, you, you nailed it on the first try. All right. John, this is Chris. Uh, first question up is, is, is this your first time visiting a Southern football podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that sounded like a warning. <laughs> That's, we'll, we'll have plenty for you, I promise. It's, yeah, it's no, good. it's – yeah, uh, it is, it is. I mean, we're we're Big Ten country guys all the way, Northwestern focused, uh, but, you know, we, we kind Love of – Northwestern focused and then Big Ten focused and then college football focused and it all branches out from there. But, uh, but yeah, this is my first time venturing into the South. That's, a, that's kind of the reason that we brought you in is because, obviously, we're an SEC podcast. Uh, but we venture out into, you know, the rest of the college football universe and whatnot – now, the reason that you and I have started talking is because of your article about Hugh Freeze back on, what, July 22nd, I believe. Uh, it was yeah, entitled something like that. Freezing in Tampa, right? Right. Now, you did some digging into the escort call on Freeze's records and the idea that he was not even in Tampa on the night of the phone call. Obviously, we don't know that for sure, and it, it kind of alludes to the idea that maybe the call was for a recruit and that there could be others. But let's let's go through some of this, all right? First... Ole Miss has been all over the place in their defense against the Houston Nut lawsuit, and the one that actually got Freeze fired over the escort call. They released a few records. Uh, the media was able to find the call in question. They fired Freeze, and now that Nut's attorney, Thomas Mars, has requested all of Freeze's records, they first tried to charge him $25,000 for the phone logs, and then they came back and said that it's actually not a university phone, that it was paid for by a private institution and not the university. You're in a whole different part of the world from us. Is, is this... <laughs> Is it actually news up there? Like, what do you make of all this? It's it's funny. I think uh, it, in the wake of, of the piece that we wrote and kind of the, the firestorm in and around Starkville that happened <laughs> after it. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the I think we we read a post uh, that we mentioned on our pod uh, I, on one of the Mississippi State boards. It was something like, "How come a, a couple Northwestern fans who were just driving by, rubbernecking at this thing, you know, put anything like this together?" Um, we, you know, I, I think they said a couple bored Northwestern fans. And Sammy on our pod said, "Hey, we are not bored, my friend." <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, I think it, it's. I mean, and, and the funny thing was, it, this is also bizarre from our end because, like you said, it's not our neck of the woods. I mean, it was a national story. We're right in the middle of knee deep of doing all of our Big Ten previews. I mean, we preview everyone on Northwestern schedule, and then all the Big Ten teams we don't play, which is a lot at this point, um, and our non cons, and and you know, we take pride in all that. So we're knee, knee deep in all that, and then this kind of came out. I think it the story broke. I want to say on a Thursday night, and it was like ten minutes before we even you know, we're going on our pod for that week. So we, you know, we ended up batting that around. And then, yeah, after in the wake of that, of that pod in the story, I think we just kind of find ourselves sitting around saying, well, you know, everyone's always talking about, there just seems to be this assumption that he bought, that he was buying escorts for himself. And that's where the, the call came from and all that stuff. And just like you said, that may all end up being completely true. And I think you've talked about some of the writing that you've done uh, just in the past week on Winning Cures Everything. 
talking about the possibility that, you know, the way things are breaking right now, the visit to Rashawn Gary may have actually been a week or two earlier, which opens the possibility that he very well may have been in Tampa and then gone from Tampa to D.C. or something like that. But at the time, we're just sitting there saying, why is everyone just taking it at face value? Well, especially because the university had been known for lying about, like, that's why they're having the whole, like, the whole lawsuit. Well, that too, and I mean, it's like, I just, in in the land of Robert Kandice and Laramie Tunsil, and there seemed to be a little bit too much giving Hugh Freeze the benefit of the doubt. That's what it just seemed like yes. to us. Yes, 100%. And, so we, and, and you know, it's funny, I, I, we were laughing about this, um, you know, talking with the pod, with our guys, the Westlaw Pirates guys, just because, you know, we're sitting around being like, if we've, you know, you know, back in the pre Twitter era, you know, certain websites that I could name right now were made on the ability to track where a plane was at a certain oh, yes. place and time. I won't mention any names. I'm just saying. Oh, I'll go on and claim one of them. <laughs> That's a, hey, look, when, when the Alabama, all right, so I, I was born and raised an Alabama fan. I had a right. site called MemphisTider.com, and that site was built on one hatred for Mike Shula because I hated Mike Shula. <laughs> And then it was built on plane tracking to find out who the next coach was going to be. Right, I would track planes from the University of Columbia, South Carolina for Steve Spurrier. We had one that was going to Norman that became a, a headline title on my site. It was Dude at Stoops. But, like, it, I mean, it, it's all about plane tracking. And now, of course, they found a way to block that. Right. But. Well, exactly. And that's so that's what I was saying. I was, that's why it's so funny when this all came down, because I was like, you built your site back in the day on the ability to track planes at the time. And the funny thing is, right, on one hand, you can't do that now. But on the other hand, you can harness the power of the information superhighway and you don't even have to do that to get a pretty good idea, especially with a guy like Freeze, who's tweeting, you know, all day, every day about this stuff. Exactly. So it, it, it just started as a, a kind of a little project of ours where we were like, well, can we just go back and look at the old tweets and piece it together? And it was incredibly easy to do. So easy that when we were putting it together, we were kind of sitting around being like, why is no one else doing this? And then I'm poking around on some of the SEC boards and I'm seeing, you know, even people who are throwing around conspiracy theories. And you mentioned the recruit thing. We were careful not to go that far in our piece. Although obviously anyone could draw conclusions of exactly right. if I mean it's 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 not rocket science. If he's not making the calls for himself, why would he be doing it? But the but so we're piecing it together and and then kind of looking and, and even people who are kind of throwing around some of these conspiracy theories and stuff are saying things like, Well, I heard that, you know, it's it's I it's related to IMG Academy and I know he was there that day and you know we're kind of reading this being like you don't know any of that no one knows any of this yeah. we've got better information than anybody and it and you know the best stuff we've got doesn't have him being there so we put it up like you said I think it was on like July 22nd or something like that tweeted it out there was limited interest from our end just because again we're not an SEC country I mean we're northwestern focused big 10 focused and then uh a day or two later, it got on Mississippi State message boards, and, and then uh, it took off. caught, and then it was a forest fire. Yeah, from there, and now you know, Deadspin's picked it up, and a couple of other people. But and of course, so again, this is totally out of left field for us because we're in the middle of talking, you know, Iowa, Michigan, Ohio State, talking Northwestern offense, defense, and everything, and then this just kind of explodes. So it's been hilarious from our end. The the sex scandals and the re- paying recruits and all that. This is common. For SEC football, like this is, we're we're so used to this at this point that it it's almost not even like you don't even bat an eye at it down here. It's it's interesting for like rivals, but well, not I, for anybody else because it's normal. That's why Mississippi sure. State's blowing this up. This is their biggest win of the off season. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And I and 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 you know Northwestern, we've got a little uh, Gator Bowl a couple of years ago. We've got a little Mississippi State experience from from that day. So between a Gator Bowl win and Mississippi State fans blowing up our website, I've got nothing but good things to say about the Bulldogs there down you go. in Starkville. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. Right. Uh, no, go ahead. It, now, it, I'm, I'm going to move away from football for just a minute. Now, there was a story that popped today that I, I immediately wanted to talk to somebody about it. And you're an educated guy. So I figured, sure. well, why not, right? So uh, instructor Rick Watson for his computing class that was offered at Terry College of Business at the University of Georgia, according to his online syllabus, 
has implemented a stress reduction policy that apparently allows students to select their own grade if the one they received does not sit well with them. And I quote, <laughs> if you feel unduly stressed by a grade for any accessible material or the overall course, you can email the instructor indicating what grade you think is appropriate and it will be so changed. No explanation is required. Now, first off, we, we know that the guy's classes are going to be full for as long as he's teaching. As long as he's got this in there. Second, how in the world can universities allow this to happen? Like, there's got to be some level of accountability for students, right? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, in Big Ten country, Jim Harbaugh is working on a way to implement that policy right now. <laughs> that it's he's he's going to figure that out. I think I think all the I think all the classes they're taking in Paris next summer or wherever the football team's going, I'm sure they're going to be implementing those kind of policies too. It's funny to to dovetail with that. Going back to what you're saying about the the sex scandals in the SEC or whatever, you know, we do have Ohio State in our conference, so it's not like we're completely okay. you know That's scandals. A- Lydell Ross was was once uh, cut <laughs> was once kicked off the team for trying to pass counterfeit strip club currency. Okay, so like it's, there you it's go. not like crazy stuff has. It hasn't happened in our neck of the woods, but uh, Ohio State is basically just SEC North. <laughs> right. That's all it so, is. So, <laughs> yeah, no. So that is that is hilarious to me. Um, it's you know it's it's funny thinking back to when we were in school and everything. And I think you know there were certain certain majors and, and you know different schools do it different. I mean Northwestern. I mean they're half of the whole recruiting pitch for the football team is based on the academics and and all those kind of things. So we're it's it's kind of funny where we we have a little bit less of a glass house that we can throw stones from although of course no college football program is perfect by any stretch of the imagination but but I mean even back when I was in school at NU there were certain classes that were known to cater to athletes and some of those classes specifically had policies that were like you cannot be absent for this class more than a couple times because you will get kicked out of the class um, because I think they're you know to try to fight against the whole academics and, and you know rocks for jocks and all those kind of things and exactly. everything like that but again we're having I mean there, there's been some stories that have been coming out lately with NU where it's um, you know and I mean Stanford NU we offer so few kids just because like the school won't let i mean the standards are so tight that the the amount of offers and you sends out is so small um that you kind of have to hit on a bunch of guys and then you got schools like iowa state or whatever throwing like 300 offers out you know and just take whatever lands so it's funny it's it's different strokes but but you know that also sounds like one of these whole you know i mean we're we're what I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're we're you know we're we're late '90s, early 2000s, and it was it was a yep. different time. You couldn't just be like, my oh, feelings 100%. were hurt. My, my feelings were hurt. Can you give me a better grade? Uh, you know, and and can I discuss you? you we would have been tri- laughed. You out triggered of the class. me with that C that you gave me, so I'm going to need you to bump that up to an A. <laughs> yeah. The word triggered didn't used to exist. <laughs> yeah. No, that that you kind of led into my next question. All right, so uh, down here. If you are recruited by Vanderbilt and you're a smart guy, you are you know you're kind of pushed that direction. Like, hey, you may not be the best football player, but you can get a Vanderbilt education, and it doesn't matter what happens on the football field. Now, Northwestern is building a a new athletic facility right on the lakefront. This thing looks absolutely incredible. Northwestern doesn't just let anybody into school. Like, what impact is this new facility going to have up there? Do you think? Do you think you guys could ever have as successful a program as maybe a Stanford, or are the academic restrictions maybe a little too much to maintain a, a highly successful football uh, football program? Well, the bottom line is, and this is it's funny you mention that because just in the past two weeks we had a cornerback recruit from Texas decommit and switch to Stanford, and uh, on the flip side. Um, you know, Kane Coulter, who was one of our best players of the past 10 years and then became famous for leading the whole union thing and all that stuff. Um, yeah. He was a Stanford decommit who switched to Northwestern at the last second. So we certainly fight over recruits. Now, we can build all the lakefront facilities in the world, and it still isn't going to make it 80 and sunny every day all year long in, yeah. you know, in Evanston yep. the way that it is in Palo Alto. And that's like the that's probably the single biggest thing that we fight against. I mean, I think, you know, when. When Cut, I mean Cutcliffe at Duke is just kind of coming off of what, relatively speaking, were a couple. Uh, I mean, Duke won a couple coastal or Atlanta. I can't. I don't know which it is. <laughs> East, West, whatever. In the ACC, Duke won a couple of those with Cutcliffe, and you know, at that point, you know, we were really fighting with Duke for recruits, and now it's kind of back to like fighting with Stanford, fighting with Vandy, whatever. But I mean, it's they are when guys commit. 
you always hear, you know, that it, they talk about the academics and everything. Obviously, like Lakefront. I mean, Fitz, he gets his office in the new facility with the Chicago skyline in the background and the lake, and I'm sure that all looks great. Um, but yeah, it's it, it certainly doesn't hurt um, for sure. But I mean, the academics is always going to be a thing that hamstrings you. On the other hand, um, the you know, the vast majority of your guys are going to be there for four years, or five years. You're going to be able to develop them. Guys aren't going to get kicked out of school. Guys aren't going to leave early for the NFL. Um, I say that having this past year, we've had a guy kicked off the team or at least suspended <laughs> and a guy leave early for the NFL. But in general... Uh, it's, you know, you do at least get that out of it. But, yeah, it's um, it certainly is is tough uh, for sure. That just means that you're becoming a successful program. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you're, just, right. you're just getting better at football. Right, yeah, we had, uh, we had uh, what was it, the last recruiting cycle or the recruiting cycle before, we had a guy decommit really late and switch to Oklahoma, and we were really mad, but we were like, but at least we're going toe-to-toe with Oklahoma for these guys now. <laughs> you yeah, know? that's it. You're in the same conversation, and that's a, you've got to get to that point before you start winning them. So, <laughs> right. So my, my question is this, what are Northwestern's chances of actually winning the Big Ten West this year? Their schedule sets up pretty favorably. It also sets up favorably for Wisconsin – is this the year that they can make the push to go to Indianapolis? So it's it's tight. Um, I think the weird thing about this, so, I mean, to kind of toot our horn, horn a little bit and really to toot the other two guys, Horn, um, Sam and Scuzz, who run the Westlot Pirates with us, we dive really deep into our Big Ten previews, and we, I mean, we're, we do every team in the Big Ten, and we do it heavy. Um, and I think... I, I always take the defensive side of the ball. Scuzz takes the offensive side of the ball, and Sam kind of runs a little bit of everything. And this year is going to be a really weak defensive year in the conference. Um, I mean, from from a national perspective, it's not going to look that way because Ohio State's going to have one of the best defenses in the country, and Wisconsin's always good on defense. But the other, the whole rest of the conference, it's going to kind of be a, a mess on defense. I think we're going to have as good of a defense as anybody. Um, and yeah, the West is kind of wide open. I mean, you got PJ Fleck in Minnesota now. Um, you got. Uh, you know, Nebraska's kind of up and down. Iowa's up and down. I think between Nebraska, Iowa, and Minnesota, any of those teams could finish as high as second in the conference, as low as like fifth or sixth in that side of the conference. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you pegged it. It's us in Wisconsin. I, I do think, um, you know, we tend to not overestimate how well Northwestern's going to do year in and year out. We're pretty realists, but I think, you know, it feels like nine or ten wins for us this year just because we're at a good place at a time when a bunch of other teams in the West are not. Now, with that said, Wisconsin owns that side of the conference right now, um, yeah. and they're just so good on defense year in and year out. I mean, you can kind of look at what they've done with the amount of turnover that they've got. I mean, you know, previewing their defense – you know, it's rare. I mean, they'll have a guy like, you know, J.J. Watt every blue moon, a um, guy like Joe Schobert, a guy like T.J. Watt. But by and large, you look at their, like, stats year in and year out, they don't have guy. They don't have a guy with more than, like, 60 tackles on the team in any given year. They're lucky if they have a guy reach double digits in sacks or tackles for loss. It's just the, the defense is, like, 15, 20 deep, and they're all good. And they they rotate them in and out, and they just play fantastic football. So it's like their offense hasn't been good. Last year we were in that game until the end of the third quarter, and then yeah. um, they had a p- couple big reverses, and it got away from us. Now, with that said, we didn't sniff the end zone for the vast majority of that game. We were close because oh, yeah. they didn't they didn't score. We didn't score. Well, here's um, the biggest thing here is that with Wisconsin, you know, they lose their defensive coordinator, and under normal circumstances, with most teams, if you have coaching turnover. You don't really know what to expect. With this team, it is literally the exact same blueprint for every coach that comes in. Like, oh, it's for It's the sure. same head coach. Like, different head coaches, different, different defensive coordinators. coordinators. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing every yeah. time. It blows my mind to look at that team and realize, like, they've had, you know, four different head coaches and, like, six different coordinators, and it doesn't matter. Oh, and it's and they're not doing it with recruiting either. Oh, I mean, Lord they're no. they're bringing. I mean, it's the average guy who's going to that program is like th- three stars. We compete with Wisconsin for defensive prospects all the time, um, and they, for whatever reason, they bring it in, and it's just gangbusters. They're they're able to put it together. Now their offense is kind of cut and dry. I mean, obviously the back the the side note to this whole conversation is the Big Ten East is just 
light years ahead of the Big Ten West <laughs> right now. Um, and that's, you know, cr- we cross ourselves every night that we don't have to play that side of the conference. Um, and, and, you know, we get our crossover games and everything. But, I mean, Ohio State and, I, I mean, I think there's a chance Ohio State, at the end of the day, maybe the best football program in the country. And Penn State is easily the, f- I mean, that's their appointment viewing every game yes. because Penn State is going to score fifty points a game and they're going to give up forty five points a game. Well, that, so, that actually clo- like it. It this was my closeout question. Sure. It, so we're we're talking about the rest of the Big Ten. The perception nationally at this point really couldn't be better, right? Other than you know Dan Wolken from USA Today saying like the Big Ten is the most overhyped conference, et cetera, et cetera. Like there are four teams ranked in the top ten of the preseason coaches poll, and then there are no teams after those four. Like, last year it was four good teams and then really nothing, aside from, like, a Nebraska team that somehow found nine wins with a really average football team. Like, what what do you make of the league as a whole right now? So, it's funny. Again, I think one of the big misnomers, because the Big Ten always has this— I mean, it's, I mean it goes back decades, but the Big Ten has this running-in defense reputation. And— it's weird, again, because Ohio State, everyone's eyeballs is going to be on Ohio State all year. And that team plays, uh, that that's an NFL defensive line. And not only is it an NFL defensive line, but it's they're probably six deep at that line. And they're good everywhere else. I mean, they're, I mean, for the amount they're turning over in the secondary, the five-star guys they've got stepping in. So that defense is going to crush everybody. And then everyone's going to be like, oh, well, they're the vanguard of the conference. Things drop like a rock defensively after Ohio State. Um, You've got Wisconsin. We talked about their reputation, sure. Um, Michigan, we all know the the kind of recruits Harbaugh's bringing in. Michigan turns over 10 of 11 guys on that defense. Yeah. And and after that, you can't point to any one team in the conference and say they had a great defense last year. Iowa had their moments. We had our moments. But that's it. So, Obviously, you know, there are some great offenses, too. We've got some some guys, certainly between Justin Jackson, Clayton Thorson, um, that if our line can get together this season, especially at the tackles, we could potentially have um, an explosive offense, too. And that's the kind of thing where it's like in, in a situation where a lot of teams, especially in the back half of the conference, are just a mess right now. We're one of those teams where we like, well, we get to play a lot of these teams, and relatively speaking, we got a pretty darn good football team. It was kind of surprising to me that that really no one is ranking us in the top twenty-five. I kind of figured we'd be nipping right around there. We hurt ourselves because at the start of last season, our team underperformed so much. I mean, we had an FCS loss last year at the oh, beginning yeah. of the year, just a nightmare. And then you look and and we beat Pitt in a game where we just flat out played Pitt at the end of the season, and that team beat Clemson. So if we would have just taken care of business at the beginning of the year, we lost, I think, by one point to Western Michigan, and they didn't lose again until their bowl game. Oh, and then um, the, uh, the the FCS loss you were talking was like, what, 9-7 to seven to Indiana oh, State? It, it was, and it was just our offensive line basically just didn't show up for the game. I mean, I mean that, that sure. sounds like the worst football game that you could possibly watch. <laughs> it was, and keep it, and keep in mind, right? Like this is an offense where you know Mel Kiper Jr. rated rated Thorson this year as like the fifth best potential NFL prospect quarterback, just because like <laughs> the guy's six four can throw the ball a country mile and runs like a deer. And then we start Justin Jackson, who's going to break five thousand rushing yards for sure, career this season. <laughs> and then we scored six points against an FCS team, and it was yeah. just the the most brutal set of of. I mean, everyone, everyone. I mean, the defense did fine. I mean, giving up nine points is nothing, but the but it was just the brutalist set of offensive line play and just a total disaster and bad play calling and yeah, an absolute nightmare. So and then it's like that kind of thing where that that should have been a gimme. You take the Western Michigan where um, Thorson fumbled going into the end zone in that game, and it's funny. I I wonder. I kind of wonder what is the trajectory of PJ Flex's career look like if Thorson doesn't fumble that ball because their uh, Western Michigan's whole deal last year was being undefeated all season. Um, yeah. And if Thorson doesn't fumble going to the end zone, we win that game too. So then you'd be talking nine wins in a bowl win instead of seven wins in a bowl win, and you know. But I I do think though we're we're in a pretty good place. But with that said, oh, I mean to compare it to the SEC, I mean obviously you've got teams that are certainly you know, down at any given time, but, uh, expansion did the big 10, no favors. I mean, we talk about it on the pod, but I, I mean, I you, like for Rutgers to be in this conference five years from now, I, I mean, I don't even know. I mean, they're, they, that's, Rutgers, a, that's obscene. That's laughable. 
I mean, I they they played three teams in the SEC West last last so last year. So you're talking three teams they'll play every year in their side of the conference, and they lost by an average score, I think, of about fifty five to nothing. So that was like Ohio State, Michigan, and and uh, Penn, State. Penn State. Now, granted, yeah. those are three fantastic teams, but you're talking three teams on your side of the conference, and they lost by fifty five to nothing to each of those teams. So, and then you got yep. Illinois is a mess right now, which God love it. I mean, we've nothing makes us happier than Illinois football being a mess. But <laughs> Illinois, is a, Illinois is a mess. I mean, Maryland's you know having a, they haven't adjusted to coming into the conference. Rutgers is a mess. Um, interesting one to watch out for, and I'll tell you this right now because I know this probably isn't where you guys eyeballs is, but uh, watch Michigan State because that is a team that's only a couple years removed from you know going eleven and one, but. Since Pat Narduzzi left that program, that defense has not been what it was. And they're not playing at a level that they've been playing at. And they're not recruiting at a level they were recruiting at either. And right now, I think if you look at Michigan State's defense as a whole, they've got about one recruiting class of guys on that team. Let's say the guys that are like redshirt freshmen or sophomores. That's an elite recruiting class. The whole rest of that recruiting class is basically about on, on par with what Northwestern's recruiting, which is fine if you're Northwestern, but it's not fine if you're Michigan State and you're expecting to have the best defense in the country. I They're not in a good place right now for how many good teams there are in the Big Ten that aren't them. Um, and I think that, like, everyone's looking to see, you know, how things are shifting in the conference. I think Michigan State might be in trouble. That I breaks like my heart. I'm a huge D'Antonio fan, so... <laughs> it's well. I mean, it's it's funny too. I mean, that guy he built the program out of nothing, um, and and put a giant defensive stamp on their reputation. But I do think you know Narduzzi was a big part of that. And I mean, and and again, I you know it could be that they rebound with some amazing season, and I'm looking like a moron because they went like eleven and one and they had a gap year and then went right back to being good. No, but I'll no, tell you right I'm now, sure the talent is is not really there on that defense. If you, no. if you look at the recruits Michigan State's bringing in and you compare it to Ohio State, Michigan, even Penn State, it's not on the same level. And I don't know that it ever really was. Yeah, you I, know, for some reason they always reminded me of Wisconsin where they didn't have the recruits, they didn't have the stars, but they always right. played with the big boys. Right, they, it, they're kind of like Wisconsin with Detroit. So every now and then yeah. they'll get like a five star, like That's one right. five star, one four star, right? Exactly. Yeah, they have they have access to some some inner city kids that can play ball. Right. Well, good deal. That's going to wrap us up. I do believe we are uh, we are at our thirty minute threshold here. So he is John yeah, Lacombe. Yeah, sure. So you can check him out. Uh, check out his work at westlotpirates dot com. Follow him on Twitter at Westlot Pirates. Download the podcast. All that good stuff. John, we're looking forward to talking with you more during the season, my friend. Yeah, hey, thanks a lot. And again, just a, a quick plug. If, if you all want to see what's going on in the Big Ten, we're doing all our Big Ten podcasts right now. Check them out. Uh, they, they are in-depth. You're going to learn everything you need to know. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you, buddy. This is Gary, host of Winning Cures Everything. If you're looking for affordable custom web design, business cards, brochures, and more, check out Kyle Seegers Designs at kyleseegers.com. Kyle offers full website design, monthly site maintenance, and content management system training. Remember, for all your web design needs, check out kyleseegers.com. That's K-Y-L-E-S-E-G-A-R-S.com. Welcome back to Winning Cures Everything with Gary and Chris. Now, Chris, I want to talk through some hot topics right quick. We we appreciate Ryan Nanny for coming on. We appreciate John Lacombe. Uh, Lacombe. You did it. I did, I did it right the first time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> Westlotpirates.com. That's right. Awesome site, awesome podcast, all, great. Dudes. All those guys are good. Um, but let's talk through the, the, talk through some of these. Jay Cutler's coming out of retirement to play for the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> Cutler had his highest QBR in 2015 when Adam Gase was his offense coordinator and quarterback coach in Chicago. This looks like a pretty good fit, right? It, oh, by the way, the doctor that we talked about last week <laughs> that was getting roasted on Twitter about his misdiagnosis of Danny Hill's injury, yeah. I bet he's laughing at all these jokers right now. Like, I'd have come back and smoked some people on Twitter, but that guy's a better man than me, apparently. Because, like, it, it, when when it came out, like, oh, Danny Hill's going to be fine, and then it comes out like, oh, he's not going to be fine. Like, that dude it's was It's still a dumb justified. thing to sit down, watch something on TV, and then try and diagnose it to the I world agree with on that, Twitter. but... Like, that's still not a smart move. 
I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's talk about Jay Cutler, though. What Smoking do you think? Jay is back in the NFL, and it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I, I think love, it's a good thing. I love a world where Jay Cutler is a quarterback. Oh, hell yeah. So so we we weren't, we haven't done this podcast ever after other than last year. For the last five or six years, anybody who's been in a very competitive fantasy football league with me understands that nobody has bought into Jay Cutler hype and – his potential and ability more than I have. So, <laughs> needless to say, I have been burned at the stake by him, and I can't stay away. Uh, he's got all the talent in the world. He's always had all the talent in the world. I don't think he was retired because he wasn't good at football I, or he didn't want to play. I, I, think, I think nobody wanted to bring him in to be the backup. That's right. Well, he wouldn't come in to be a backup. He made it clear, if I'm coming, I'm going to be a starter. Yeah. And I won't start money. Which I think the contract Miami got's awesome. awesome. One year for ten million, like that's. Perfect. But it's not even ten. It's five million guaranteed, and the other five million is based on a percentage of playing time. Yeah. And then there's like three to six million in incentive bonuses. It's all incentive laden. Yeah. Like why would you not draw a contract up like this? It's unbelievable. The and I I'm like you, so I I know his relationship with Adam Gay uh, Gase. I I had him in fantasy that year because I had him most years. And he did well. He's he just can't stop making those mistakes. My question is this: You, you know what I you know what I heard on uh, on whatever one of the Chicago guys yeah, okay. said he can't read the field. Like he he's he can make every he throw make in every, the world. He's, he's a smart all, guy. Yeah, but he he cannot read the field. He never has been able to. He never will be able to. But if you can lay out the play for him and you draw it up correctly. And apparently Adam Gase can do that. Yeah. If you can do that, then this guy can can get a lot of yards and points and whatnot. They can win Well, with him at quarterback. I think it's going to take some time. So, remember, he's missed all of minicamp. He's missed a lot of, you know, I know they're just now starting training camp. He's not in football shape. I don't know how many times he got injured pretty early last year. <laughs> you heard what he said earlier, right? I don't know how many times he's throwing the football. Huh? You, so, on Monday, he came in, he was like, yeah, I don't really have to worry about a bunch of the cardiovascular stuff because I, I play quarterback. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm fine. Well, I get that, but, like, is the arm <laughs> together? I mean, I guess you're right. You know, well, here, I don't think they would have signed him. Then I don't think they would have signed him if he hadn't been throwing. Yeah. Like, that's that's what I gather from all this. It, like, I think they would have taken any number of other people. Of course, at the same time, hell, they reached out to, like, Tim Tebow. Like, they were, they were contemplating Tebow and Kaepernick and – RG three, Kyle Orton, yeah, like all these dudes. Uh, what was the other? Christian Ponder, yeah. Christian Ponder, like well, give me a come they're on. Desperate, they're struggling. Uh, now, I know I they're desperate, think, but like, I do think that all of those other guys they were looking at for backups for Matt Moore. Yeah, and and Cutler is is the. I do think he's probably the best option for them out of everybody that you just named. Yeah. Everybody that they were looking at, he's the one guy that could come in and and lead this team. So I'm I'm excited about a world with Jay Cutler playing football. I like it's entertaining. Now let's now that you're talking about entertaining, oh let's gosh. talk about the Jets. Oh my God! Christian Hackenberg apparently can't break a huddle. So I feel bad being a Pats fan. Like I don't like bullies, and I know they're the bully. But this is just this is the most Jet story on the face of the planet. It's it's almost to a point where I feel bad laughing at him. I feel that, like I'm laughing at somebody. Who's you ain't like, fooling anybody under, over here, buddy. <laughs> like this. Here, look, listen to the story. All right, here's here's the and I laid it out in the perfect little small segment on Monday at Jets camp. Christian Hackenberg was having trouble just breaking the huddle correctly during one rep in seven on seven drills. As he approached the line of scrimmage, a coach ordered him to rehuddle. When he broke the huddle again. In the wrong fashion for a second time, he was ordered off the field. Tell me what in the hell is going on? I don't know. Like, it, it, now, now how much <laughs> of this? I do have a question. So he was he was a rookie last year, right? Mm -hmm. He was on this coaching staff. They didn't lose anybody. They're still all the same coaches there. Probably some minor coaches turned over, but the core of the head coaching, the head coach is there. My question is this: How much of this is coaching? Because it can't be that hard. No. So has somebody actually told him what to do, or is he just walking out there trying to figure it out and he can't get it, or has he been shown and he's just that dumb? I, is it I don't, possible for him to be that dumb? Because we joke about athletes being dumb and not being able to read and stuff, but like, is it possible that he's really that dumb? Well, right. Remember, he played under Bill O'Brien, and 
and and he played under James Franklin, and he was never really good. Like he was good as a freshman, but like I think they had dumbed down the playbook so much, you know that it and he it, he didn't have to win much to look good at Penn State at that point because they were on probation, like all that stuff was going on. I I don't know what like everybody says he's got an arm. Everybody says you know oh he's, he's better than whatever, but like I, he he looks like the prototypical NFL quarterback. Yes, I don't know that he's got the stuff between the ears to be able to do it. This is this is why I'm always skeptical of just drafting a guy that looks the part but didn't win a lot in college. I am with this, you 100. This is why when I tell my friends wins have to matter and they tell me no they don't no they don't and they throw out a bunch of goofy names and they argue with me for two hours. At some point in time, <laughs> Mitch Trubisky. Yes, no, it's just it's just not. My God, it's not just Mitch Trubisky, man. I'm, no, it's I'm all a, over the place. I am I am a Browns fan, and they took a guy that went to Notre Dame, a big boy football school, and he won three games last year. Four games. Four games last year. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no, I'm like, with you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like when at least they got him matter. in. The, at least they got him in the second oh, round, shit. and it really doesn't matter. I do not care. Yo, it doesn't matter. Second round picks aren't valuable. No, I mean they're Second valuable. Second round but... is the most valuable of the draft. Well, it's they the absolute most valuable of the draft. They had multiple picks though. Doesn't matter. You don't just flush them away. That's how you end up staying the Browns. Anyway, <laughs> they're not as bad as the Jets. I'm grateful of that. Sean Kaiser might be a stud. You can't win more than four games at Notre Dame. You should not be an NFL quarterback. I don't care what your measurables are. That's how you end up with guys like Christian Hackenberg. Well, and Osweiler looks like he's going to be starting for your boys. Well, yeah. So, and, and which now, is kind of scary. Ha- ha- Christian was supposed to be the starter. He was the the guy that had the best chance, and now it's McCown, and there's no more race. We just need somebody who's played this position before. and To and get us through our awful year, and then we'll draft Sam Darnold or Josh Rosen or somebody. All right, your boy Vince Wilfork hit us up with a retirement video. You see this? I love this man. He's the new hype man for Kingsford Charcoal. I absolutely Like, this this dude is wearing overalls with nothing on underneath. He's got the rolls just hanging out, like, doing his thing. For those that don't know, he he is a large man. He probably weighs 350 pounds. Oh, bull crap. Probably, all right, maybe more than that. I am 350. All that, right. that guy's I'm, bigger I'm gonna, than gonna you. Make, uh, he's a lot bigger than me. Yeah. Him. All right. So so let let's round to four hundred. He's a Gary size person bigger than me. Like he's a whole other <laughs> person bigger than me. I'm but a look, big boy. The I, video is it's him out like grilling out in a Kingsford grill, smoking some meat. He's sitting in a lawn chair smoking a cigar so with awesome. a Kingsford hat on. It does not get any better than that I for love, a retirement. I love video. this man. Like it it was phenomenal. He was a great patriot. I wish he would have been able to, to have his whole career. He wanted to try to play a couple more years, went to Houston, didn't work out very well. But just this is why people love Vince. Oh, yeah. He is comfortable in his own skin. and, and He's a lot of fun, man. He's going to be great for this. I'm a guy that does barbecue competitions. I, I, I've i been involved in the Memphis and May stuff. I hope that Kingsford puts him on the tour. I hope that he's in Memphis. Oh, that'd be so much fun. I'll be finding him. So I know, Vince, I'm going to hunt you down. I know he'll be at uh, he'll be at Gillette Stadium September 5th. Oh, no. Like he'll cooking out in the week. parking lot. That's right. So, all right. Finally, because we're obligated to, there's more Ole Miss news. I've tried to stay away from it, but, you know, here's the thing. Houston Nuts attorney Thomas Mars offered a settlement to Ole Miss. Like, have you paid attention to this? Yeah. All right. So the settlement is... Houston Nutt wants no money. He wants zero dollars. What he does want is five hundred thousand dollars to go to build a a state of Mississippi sports ethics commission. Now, the reason this is hilarious is because obviously there's already an ethics commission in Mississippi, but it's not a sports one. So it's a sports ethics commission, and Ole Miss. If they agree to this, they are agreeing that they violated NCAA rules again. Like, they can get out of this for $500,000, but by doing so, they admit that they broke the confidentiality clause in the NCAA agreement because they were spreading lies, rumors about their NOA. So, I have multiple thoughts about what this could end up meaning, because if it Anybody that's read up on Chris Vaughn and all of the ACT fraud and whatnot, if they set up a sports ethics commission that actually does their job, they're going to find ACT fraud going way back further than Ed Orgeron at Ole Miss. 
Like it's it, that stuff's been going on with them and Auburn and several others for years. It dates back to to Bear Bryant at Alabama, like in Wayne County. That's right. So it, this has been going on with multiple schools forever. If they actually do their job, then they're going to find all that stuff out. Well, but does what, anybody even care? If okay, if an ethics commission began to exist in 2018. How far back would they even go? Would they care about anything that happened in the past? Like, who knows? Your job is to make sure this stuff stops because they can't they, change the past, right? So we're we're now, and I don't think the, the NCAA influence. wants to dig anymore. I don't think no, they want to go in. We've had on that all conversation. This. I yeah. think the NCAA wants to be done. Yeah, they want whatever Ole Miss has to do to just settle everything out, take their whatever their punishment is come October, take it, and let's end this situation yes now i'm for the ethics commission how do you get on that board like can we get in with nut and can he name some people to <laughs> i don't know that nut will be able to name anybody but who, I, I who think who would be in charge of placing folks in that who knows because, because you and i we, probably need to be involved we need, we need a job yeah right we would love to have this as a job i don't know if we'd be able to do this and talk about it but well, either way two two other people could do this yeah, that's that's. But you know, we may leave it for two other people to do the ethics thing too. No, we'll let two other people do the ethics. <laughs> we could thing. be outside counsel. We're gonna let two mysterious people do this, unnamed in an undisclosed location. I okay. I like Might that. be us with distorted D- like, voices. Yeah, with uh, with stage names. That's I like right. I like this idea. I like this idea. I thought this thing through. I see what you're doing. I've got a plan. All right, all right. Don't but tell anybody though. Either way, uh, we are. It, you know, it is now August eighth, and Ole Miss still has not released the NCAA response that Ross Bjork said on Monday, July twenty fourth, that would be released within the week. Uh, he was on the Rebel Grove uh, Oxford Exxon podcast again on Monday, saying that it will be released within the week. And it, it includes the COI dates, et cetera, et cetera. It, all right, so all this stuff got leaked out that, oh, the COI hearing is going to be in Mississippi, and Leo Lewis is going to be – none of that's happening. Yeah. Leo Lewis is not going to be there because the, the date is actually, from what I'm hearing, uh, it's going to be on a Saturday, like a game day Saturday. Yeah. Like they're not going to require an NCAA athlete to be no. – and, so, and from what I'm also understanding, it's not going to be in Indianapolis. It's going to be just outside Cincinnati. So – all that stuff was leaked out before. If they did make oh Lewis man, that'd be game. hilarious. Oh my god. Yeah. So, but either way, all that stuff, uh, you know, we'll stay up to date on the Ole Miss uh, mess, the fiasco that goes on in Oxford. Ah, but that is going to wrap up our show for today. We went a little long, but uh, hell, we had Ryan Natty and uh, John Lacombe on, so I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. So. Uh, you guys know what to do. Check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. You can give us a like there. You can get us on Twitter, at winningcures. You can follow myself, at Gary WCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini, C-H-R-S-B-G-I-A-N-N-I-N-I. You can also email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. You can download, subscribe to, and review the podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, all your favorite podcast apps. Every one of them, we've already tested them. They are on there. Check it out there. Leave us a five-star review on iTunes. iTunes is the most important one because about 70% of our traffic comes from iTunes. So go check that thing out. Leave us a five-star review. Once we reach 25, we are donating $25 to... Uh, St. Jude first, and then once we get another 25 reviews, we're going to don- uh, donate 25 bucks to Le Bonner, Uh and then it's going to go on and on and on and on uh, as long as people are leaving reviews. So put those things up there. Help us out. Leave your name. We will thank you personally if you have an actual name on there. So <laughs> and, of course, you can always get us on Tuesdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. on Local X Radio. That's localxradio.com, Local X app on your smartphone. For right now, until Friday, we will see you guys next go round. I hope you have a wonderful week. Have a good one, guys. Hey, this is Gary Seegers, host of The Stage View. Make sure and tune in to Local X's first morning sports show, Winning Cures Everything, with myself and Chris Giannini every Tuesday and Friday at 9 a.m. Check out the site and grab the podcasts at winningcureseverything.com.